Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Previously, I made a video where we explored the topic of extraterrestrial skies within the solar system. I suggest you watch that at some point. But in this video, we'll go beyond our sun and explore the views provided by Proxima b and the planets around TRAPPIST-1. It's going to be a fun topic, and I hope you enjoy. I want to preface this video by emphasizing a simple but very important concept, that being of constellations. Notice that when we travel far from the sun, the constellations that we're familiar with lose their traditional shape, and if we go far enough, the constellations lose form entirely. This is because of something called parallax. The constellations we know about today exist because ancient humans looked up at the sky and saw that the stars create certain shapes from our vantage point. For example, in the famous constellation Orion, let's focus on its belt. Orion's belt is formed of three stars, al Natak, Al-Nilam, and Mintaka. What's important to note here is that these three stars are not the same distances to Earth. Al-Natak is about 600 light years in front of Al-Nilam, and Al-Nilam is about 100 light years behind Mentaka. The linear appearance of these stars is just a chance alignment. We'll see the phenomenon of parallax manifest when we look up at the nighttime skies of our destinations. We'll first visit Proxima b, which you may know as the closest exoplanet to Earth, being about 4 light years away. Like most known exoplanets, Proxima b is likely tidally locked in a 1 to 1 resonance. This means that Proxima b completes a rotation on its axis in the same time it takes for it to orbit its star. As a consequence, one side is in permanent daytime and one side is in permanent nighttime. If any life exists on this planet, it probably lives along the day-night transition zone, which is called the Terminator Line. For the sake of curiosity, let's land along the Terminator line and see what there is to see. Assuming Proxima b has an atmosphere, which may or may not be the case, we see faint reddish skies with Proxima Centauri appearing very large in the sky. It does not appear very bright, however, at a magnitude of negative 22.56, even though Proxima b is located only 7 million kilometers from the surface of the star. Let's observe the night skies here and see what stars are visible, although we need to move a little bit further into the night side to see anything. Theoretically, this spot would be very, very cold. Looking into the night sky, the first thing that pops out at us is this bright star, which has a magnitude of negative 6.65. This is not the sun, we'll see it later, but this is actually the Rigel Cantaurus system. In short, Rigel Centaurus is a binary star, and Proxima Centauri has a large orbit around those stars. And from Proxima b, Rigel Centaurus is about one-fifth of a light year away. Looking towards Orion, we see something interesting. That Orion itself is relatively unchanged, but Parallax has shifted Sirius right next to Betelgeuse. From Proxima b, Orion's shoulder isn't just one star, it's actually two. Note that Sirius is located only nine light years away from Proxima b, while Betelgeuse is several hundred light years away. So Sirius will naturally be more affected by parallax. Because Proxima b is relatively close to home, quite a few of the constellations remain unchanged. For example, Cassiopeia retains its W shape and you can see a zeroth magnitude star off to the left, and that is the Sun. We'll now explore the TRAPPIST-1 system. The TRAPPIST-1 system is very unique, not only because of its seven planets, but also because of how compact it is, and this is something I mentioned in the introduction briefly. The entire seven-planet system orbits TRAPPIST-1 several times closer than Mercury orbits our own Sun. 
If we think about our own solar system, which isn't nearly as compact as the TRAPPIST-1 system is, we can see Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn from the Earth, all with the naked eye. So naturally, it would be fair to assume that the TRAPPIST-1 planets provide even better views of each other. Let's first land on TRAPPIST-1e to see an example. From the surface of 1e, the host star is large in the sky, and we can observe eclipses or transits of 1b passing in front of the star. If we look in the other direction, we can see 1f clearly defined, with even details visible on the surface. If we hop over to TRAPPIST-1c, the second planet from the star, we can have an even more spectacular view of the planetary transits. At opposition from here, 1b is as close as 630,000 kilometers away from 1c. Observing the skies from these planets puts into perspective just how compact the system is. Let's hop back to 1e and land on the night side so we can stargaze. Let's go to our reference point, Betelgeuse, and try to see if we can recognize Orion. Orion is still somewhat recognizable, but a lot less so than from Proxima b. Note that TRAPPIST-1 is about 40 light years away compared to Proxima b's 4 light years, so the effect of parallax from here is greater. We can also notice something we didn't see from Proxima b, the star Sirius, usually the brightest star in our home skies at negative 1.5, appears quite weak instead at 2.11. And of course, before we leave, let's locate our sun. And there it is. Our sun appears much more faint at a magnitude of 5.31. It would be a difficult naked eye target to an observer. TRAPPIST-1 and Proxima Centauri are two places which could become one of the first extrasolar systems humanity visits. Now I'm not giving my thoughts on when or if this could be possible, Perhaps that'll be a video of its own at some point in the future, but I think it's valuable to have a sort of preview to what these curious systems are hiding. This is assuming that the planets we covered in this video are habitable though, and that is a whole issue on its own. But once again, I would encourage any of you watching up to this point to explore Celestia or Space Engine to see what you can find, because there is a lot to see out there. Clear skies everyone, and thanks for watching.